Welcome back everybody. Sorry, it's been a couple months since my last video. It's been a pretty chaotic summer um, and I'm just getting back to getting some of the things done that I want to get done on my layout. As you notice, I have one of my SD40-2s, Illinois Central 6135 sitting on my programming track. This is an Atherin ready to roll and it has the soundtracks economy decoder in it. And I know I've been reading some forums on the Protothrottle and some people um, have had questions about how to get a, an, an economy decoder set up. So I'm just gonna quick run through how I set up my uh, economy decoder to work with Protothrottle. I'm also gonna be using JMRI to show how I get this uh, decoder programmed. Okay, you're looking at the desktop of my laptop that's hooked up to my um, Digitrack system. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and load Decoder Pro. Again, JMRI, if you're unfamiliar with it, it's a free download. Um, I'll put the link in the video description so you can get directly to their website. We're gonna open up Decoder Pro. This is a Java interface uh, program, so it does take, oh, a good 20, 30 seconds for it to load. Regardless of how quick your machine is, it's just a limitation of Java. So when you open up Decoder Pro, it brings up this screen. It has all of your locomotives that you've entered into JMRI. My um, locomotive that I'm gonna program right now, it's uh, SD40-2, number 6135. It does not have an, ent uh, uh, an entry on here yet. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on new locomotive up in the top left-hand corner. Here you can manually select the decoder out of the list that uh, Digitrax has, or not Digitrax, JMRI has. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read the type from the decoder and it's gonna give uh, several options for um, what, what the decoder actually is. If you'll notice, you can see that it's reading CV7, CV253, 256. And again, it takes just a second for this to pull from the um, from the decoder. So you can see it pulled up, all of these highlighted in blue are the possible decoders. Um, what I'm gonna do, even though it's not listed, this is an economy diesel OEM Atherin. Um, the only locomotive listed is an SD38. So I'm actually gonna select the economy 200 SD38 because it's underneath the Atherin uh, submenu. This one was with dynamic brakes. My SD40-2 does not have dynamic brakes. So now it populated, I'm gonna create a new roster entry. This is locomotive number 6135. I'm going to change the uh, address from the default address of three to 6135. I'm going to click on write, so I'm gonna write that to the decoder. So now I've just successfully changed my decoder from the default address to three to 6135. And now I'm gonna go ahead and click on this open comprehensive programmer. Okay, so this brings up um, your roster entry and this is how it's gonna show up in your locomotive roster on JMRI. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter some of this information real quick. My road name is Illinois Central. Road number is 6135. Manufacturer is Athern. Model, this is an SD40-2. Um, I'm not gonna make any comments or anything, so I'm just gonna go ahead and click on Save to Roster. Okay, so now you can see up at the top here, you have several tabs. Um, one of the ones that we're gonna focus the most on is this tab that says CV. So if you follow um, any of the other videos that I've produced, there are a list of CVs that need to be changed to allow you to number one, optimize the locomotive to run with protothrottle, and then number two, be able to make the headlights directional or non-directional. So I'm just gonna go down the list here and change the CVs that we need to change. 
so CV3 is momentum or acceleration so I'm going to change this to a value of 200 this is going to give you a little bit of delay when you um, give the locomotive some throttle it'll, it'll give it um, just a little bit of delay before the locomotive starts moving so enter the value of 200 click on right CB4 is uh, momentum or deceleration we want a fairly high value in this so after you um, take the throttle off or, or put the throttle back to idle the, the momentum of the locomotive will still carry it forward so I'm going to put this a fairly high value of 150 go ahead and write that so now we're going to go through and do the lighting features all of the lights on this um, soundtracks decoders are um, categorized as one dot and several numbers the four that we're going to focus on are 1.257 1.258 1.259 and 1.259 uh, now if you do not have jmri and you're trying to get into some of these indexed cvs you're going to have to change um, a couple of the uh, variables on your decoder you need to change CV31 to a value of 16 and CV32 to a value of 1 to get into these index. Nice thing about JMRI, we don't have to worry about that because we can just access these index CVs. So 1.257 is the front headlight. That's at a default 0, so we don't have to change it. 1.258 is the rear light that's also zero it's currently directional so as you change the direction of your locomotive it's going to switch from the front to the rear I'm going to change this to a different value on the economy decoders you don't have nearly the amount of functions as you do on a, on a tsunami decoder so on this particular decoder function 10 is disabled or it's not assigned so I'm going to make function 10 to be the rear light so I'm going to go ahead and write that. 259 is going to be your front ditch lights. That's set up as a default of 5. 260, we're going to change that to 5 as well. So we're going to give, so there's two lighting functions here, 259 and 260. And then 261 and 262, I'm going to make 6, which would be the rear ditch lights. I'm changing this because you can do this on a Genesis decoder as well. However, this particular Atherin Ready to Roll does not have any functioning rear ditch lights. So you could leave these 261 and 262 blank. It really doesn't matter. I'm just assigning it a um, lighting function of six. Now to disable the direction ability of the headlights, we need to change CV number 57 and 58 and I'm going to make both of these values 63. Okay. So you can check um, all of these out. One last thing I'm going to do here real quick is I'm going to enable the braking function. On this particular locomotive, it does not have dynamic brakes. So the brake function is controlled by CV117. And I'm gonna put this at a fairly high value of 243. This is actually gonna get subtracted from CV number four, and it's going to show how the braking, it, it, the, the distance of the braking. What I found with some of my other Atherin decoders is you just have to play with this number to get what you believe to be a prototypical braking sequence. So I've just changed all of the CVs in literally less than five minutes to make this particular locomotive compatible with the proto throttle. A couple things I'm gonna do here since this was to the default settings. I'm gonna come up here and click on sound levels. One of the things that I'm not a huge fan of the Atherin their sounds are default out of the package loud, so I'm going to crank this master volume down uh, quite a ways, just so it's not quite so loud. Knock the air horn down just a little bit too. 
you can use these slider bars that's great you don't have to go in and, and manually change any cvs you can just use the slider bars when you're done you are going to write changes on the sheet last thing i'm going to do is i'm just going to look at i'm just going to double check here so again my long address is 6135 that's correct um, you can change your speed control here. You can enable a speed table if you want to. Here are your function maps. You can just, you can see, you could use this as a toggle drop down to change these. So the backup light is now function 10, which is what I want. My two front um, lighting effects are F5. My um, two rear lighting functions are F6. F7 is dimmer, F8 is mute, F9 is the brake. F14 is half speed. Let's see what else we have going on here. Here are my lights. Here's some consist stuff. You can change this if you need to. I'm not going to mess with it right now. One of the things that I am going to do, my air horn currently is the Leslie S3L just because I really like the Nathan P5. I am going to change this to a Nathan P5 early horn. I'm going to write that change. So we just change the horn function. There are my sound levels. We already changed those. Okay. So let's go ahead and get the proto throttle configured and we'll do a test run in this locomotive. Okay, I got my proto throttle set up here. You can see it currently, it's at uh, locomotive 9612. That's one of my Atherin Genesis um, GP38s. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on set locomotive. So I'm going to set the number here to 6135. So there's six, one, three, five. The nice thing about the proto throttle is when you get a locomotive set up, it will save all of your function settings. So I'm gonna come in here to my con um, configuration function setting. So I can change any of these if I need to. So F2 is the horn, F1 is the bell, F11 is the brake, F12 is the brake release. Um, my auxiliary button, which is this one up here, is currently set at F10. If you remember, I reprogrammed 6135 to be a different um, function. This is the function 10 is the rear light now, so I'm going to change this to F4, which will be straight to idle on this particular locomotive. Engine on is F26, or this is throttle up. Engine stop is F27, which is throttle down. I'm going to leave throttle on link blank, reverse swap blank. Headlight is still F0. Front ditch is F5. Front dim, F0. Front dim 2 is F7. So rear headlight, I need to change this. So again, we made this function 10. Rear ditch is 6. Rear dim, I'm going to change this down to 10. Rear dim F7. So my up button is F13, that, that is latched. And on this particular locomotive, F13 is the coupler clank. My down button is F8, which again is latched. And that is mute on this particular locomotive. So once you're all done with that, we'll go ahead and hit save. Check the lights here. So this should be dim, bright, and then 
ditch lights. Check the horn. You can tell that's the Nathan P5. Check the bell. So, as you can tell, there's no rear ditch lights on here, so we'll just go ahead and check the rear light real quick. Dim, bright. If this was a Genesis model, it should have working rear lights, so if you did this on a Genesis decoder or a um, Tsunami 2 decoder, uh, it would have the rear lights. Go ahead and test this out here. Put this in uh, forward direction. Give it some throttle. So I'll put it back to idle. You can see when it goes to idle, it still has a little bit of momentum. Let's go ahead and give it a couple notches. I'm going to enable the brakes. So I put a pretty aggressive brake setting on this and it stops fairly quickly. Again, you can adjust your CV if you want it to change differently. So let's go ahead and release the brake. Change it to reverse. Here's mute, so you can mute it. Couplet clack. And since it's latched, you can hear the air being released. So there you go, we have successfully programmed an economy decoder to work appropriately with probe throttle.